you know, the really the in the interest of time, what I want to do is to I want to break this session into two segments. Um, let me just very quickly introduce uh, myself uh, in two minutes. Let me introduce what we do and what I do at Vadwani Foundation for small and medium sized enterprises. And then uh, I believe we are going to have um, a question and answer section uh, between just me and me uh, and very happy to answer all your questions on some of my learnings uh, uh, for the last 30 years. Very happy to share them. And uh, I must make a point to make uh, to mention here that learning is always two ways. So I'm also looking forward to learning from all of you because all of your experiences are as important as mine. Um, so that's with that context, uh, let me just sort of begin by uh, sharing with you what this Advantage program is all about and uh, your quick introduction, right? Firstly, um, I have three years of experience in strategy and management consulting and uh, pretty much uh, did a lot of work for, um, uh, you know, the small businesses as well as multinational companies as well as large corporates in India and a couple of the other uh, geographies in the world. Um, we were a great alternative to McKinsey BCG Bain uh, in my consulting altar about three and a half years ago and also to uh, alternative to big four and then was head headhunted to the foundation to look at a systemic change in small and medium sized enterprises, right? Because the Vadwani Foundation was looking at helping the small and medium sized enterprises accelerating their growth. So what do we do at Vadwani Advantage? So I've been here for the last three and a half years. I launched this program called Advantage, as you can see on the slide. Uh, in 2019, uh, when I joined the foundation, Dr. Ramesh Vadhwani is the founder of this foundation. He's based in Palo Alto. He has been in the States for the last 40 years. He's a billionaire. He's Padma Shri Awardee winner and extremely successful entrepreneur, um, has launched 42 ventures of them. 41 have been successful. So he has an incredible track record and he might be 74 in age, but he thinks like a 24 uh, year old and um, acts like a 50 year old and then it's actions and speed and implementation, etc. So highly energetic, highly kind of environment that we have at foundation that will inspire all of us. So what do we do? We want to help the small and medium sized enterprises in uh, their ecosystems in creating in house capabilities to maximize their growth and revenue. So we do three things. We diagnose the, uh, the problems with related to growth uh, as far as the SMEs are concerned. We transform them. And when it comes to transformation, it's not just about giving gyan or giving these talks. Uh, it's not about just PowerPoint slides. It's not about just intellectual stuff. We help them in actually realizing their outcomes, right? So if somewhere, uh, you know, growing at a 15% CAGR, we want to help them grow at 30%, 45%, 50%. For the simple reason that in India, for example, we have 98.5% of the 70 million MSMEs below five crore threshold level. And if any country were to be competitive, we simply can't have this kind of statistics. So we have a long tail of a lot of the companies which are suboptimal, sub inefficient. If we were to grow and make a systemic change, then we need to have about 60 to 70% only in the micro and small category and all the remaining ones in mid and large. If that were to happen, we need to transform a massive number of MSMEs into mid-size and large corporates. And that's the task that we want to do in transformation. So transformation is the heart of what we do, hand holding the SMEs in implementation of their outcomes in accelerating their uh, revenue uh, growth, profitable revenue growth. The third thing that we do, which is very important and differentiating is we empower them. What do we mean by empowering? So we believe that we would, you know, we would basically um, uh, uh, teach them how to swim as opposed to actually swimming, swimming for themselves, right? So it's very important uh, when we actually give a value add, it's just not about helping them and solving their problem, but it's about teaching them how to solve the problem, right? So some of the skills that we impart in upskilling them is basically how to inform their decisions based on data, how to make the use of the artificial intelligence, how to make use of basically understanding the change management, people management. These are all incredibly important skills. And unfortunately, entrepreneurs of small businesses do not have the legacy, nor the knowledge, and the time to be able to do that. So our task is to empower them with these capabilities so that tomorrow, if there are shocks from the external world, if there are situations that put them in trouble, they are better equipped to handle them. And not only that, we want to make them grow faster, right? So we do three things to summarize. We diagnose very scientifically, we transform them, handhold them, implement for them, and we empower them. Now, how do we do that? So the interesting thing that when it comes to diagnosis, and I'll give an example, 
is that we have built 50 to 60 different tools which are frameworks converted into tools that the SMEs can do use themselves. As you all know, SMEs do not have the discretionary money to pay very, very high fees of McKinsey, BCG, Bain and Big Four, right? Or they do not have the ability sometimes or the knowledge to be able to understand whom to hire, why to hire, how to get the work done from external consultants, because a lot of them, unfortunately today, are Ghanese and not implementers, right? And SMEs want action, SMEs want implementation, SMEs want hand-holding. So what we do is that we make sure that these tools are designed to help the SMEs to understand how to make a decision. Let me give an example. If tomorrow you were to decide that I want to export to Dubai, I want to do a trade between Australia and Dubai, I want to actually do India and US, uh, you know, go to market strategy, there is a way of doing it. There is a way of sizing the market. There is a way of understanding the competition. There is a way of deciding your product mix. There is a way of deciding which customer segment you want to focus on. Now it's a science by itself, but what we do is that we have converted all that science into tools that the SMEs can use themselves as their own people to implement it so that they make right decisions and don't regret it later. We have done an analysis of close to 3,500 companies in the last few years, and we have studied the period between 2018 and 2022. And there are three things that emerge out of this study of Indian companies, Indian MSMEs. First thing is that they have invested capital, but their return on capital employed is lagging the cost of capital. Second thing, the profits have diminished at a more alarming rate than the revenue growth. And the third thing, they have all systematically struggled between hiring uh, in hiring right talent and retaining right talent because of which they are not able to free up their own time. They land up in firefighting. And when you firefight, you don't have time for planning for short term and long term. And that itself is a big issue for a lot of the SMEs. Now, these three learnings told us that we need to basically make sure that all the SME owners not only firefight, but they also plan for future on a regular basis. So there are no fires that they can dodge, right? And that's very, very important. So we do diagnosis and these, some of these tools are very in intuitive. So diagnosis tool, for example, the online tool that we have developed is a simple online tool. You go online, ask, uh, answer a bunch of 60 to 70 questions. And at behind, there is a complexity of algorithms and logic, which will give an assessment of how good or bad your health is, your organization's health is. It's just very similar to what you do in a pathology lab. You do a blood sample, some parameters are altered, some parameters are not altered. So the doctor tells you you're fit on certain things, you're not fit on certain things, or you're ailing in certain things. And then there is a treatment pathway. This is exactly what we have done. We have put 300 human years of experience behind this tool so that you are able to assess the organization health. Similarly, there are go-to-market strategies, key account market strategies, market sizing, competitive analysis, there are 50 to 60 different tools that you can use. We have also built a solid curated network of 140 advisors whom the, um, uh, whom the SMEs can hire. We do the handholding, we do, we do the program management office support, which means we basically help the SMEs in implementation of getting the work done out of these advisors. We have also built a very solid community platform. We are investing in a state-of-the-art technology-driven community platform which will allow the SMEs to interact with their ecosystems, their customers, uh, and their peers, et cetera. And that means uh, exchanging best knowledge, exchanging best practices, and also allowing interactions to transact. More importantly, we have now decided for little mid-sized companies, we are going to give subsidy to the fees that SMEs land up paying the advisors. We all know that they don't have the discretionary cash at their disposal. So what we have done is that we are offering a 50% of the consulting fee or a certain amount, whichever is lower, which will help them incentivize, them incentivize them to hire good experts. Because knowledge is a process whereby you do things on your own, but you also listen to others and then imbibe what you, what you have learned and then make a synthesis and then implement them. And which is the process that we want to follow in empowerment, in making them learn how to solve the problems. So this, this, all these offerings that we have put together are basically designed to differentiate ourselves because as a philanthropy, we don't charge a single dollar, a single rupee. But at the same time, we want to make sure that the uh, offerings that we have are world class. There is no compromise on that, right? Now, therefore, it's a differentiating program. We are not there to make sure that we monetize. We are there to make sure that we create impact 
you we convert you from micro to small small to mid and mid to large as soon as possible and at the same time through that we'll be able to realize our own dream of making sure that we achieve the social objective of creating employment right because india has had for example last nine years jobless growth and we want to make sure that the correlation between the gdp growth sme growth and the jobs is positive is significant and it's upwards uh, 70 uh, 0.7 or 0.8 right today it is 0.43 which is quite low actually if you ask me so therefore what we want to do is to differentiate ourselves and make sure that we help as many SMEs as possible. Since 2019, we have helped 600 SMEs, 70 different types of problems, 50 different locations, 25 different sectors, and we have built 30 plus ecosystem partnerships. I'm, a, I'm, I'm very happy to share that our SME clients have outperformed their peers by 200 to 800 basis points and 100 in revenue and 100 to 300 basis points in EBITDA margins between this period of 2022. We have also delivered a net promoter score of 73. The global world gold, gold standard is 50 to 60 for consulting firms. Uh, very happy to share that we have beaten that. Now, therefore, we thought it will be interesting to sort of help the SMEs in a very differentiating, pioneering way. We are the only program that blends learning, consulting without charging anything, and at the same time realizing the outcomes and handholding the SMEs. And that's the only global program that we have today. Uh, we don't have that example in private sector. We don't have that example in the nonprofit sector. And very importantly, we are trying to therefore summarize. Uh, I'll let me summarize by you know saying that we are solving knowledge problem, we are solving time problem, and we are solving money problem. And therefore, if that comes together, then the entrepreneurs will be able to hire good people, retain good people, leverage them, and it will be able to go faster. That's a very quick in shell all about, um, you know, I, that's the first segment of what I wanted to talk about. And in terms of my learnings, very happy to answer your questions. Um, I had requested Jaspreet and everybody in the team, let it make, uh, let, let's be free flowing in our interactions in terms of question and answers rather than soliloquy. I've always believed in interacting more and answering questions. Um, very happy to answer any questions on Vadwani Advantage or myself, and then we can move on to the next segment. Thank you. Yes, Sandeep, you can go on. Yes. First of all, thank you very much, Samir. It had been a very crisp and very, very focused, very impactful uh, dialogue, the first session. So, congrats for that. I have two uh, queries. <clears throat> One is that, uh, just to introduce uh, about myself, <clears throat> I am in the corporate world for the last 35 years, having worked with Honda, Samsung, ITC, etc., and engaging all the big four only every time, everywhere. Okay, because uh, you know the brand matters. So these companies go to these companies. What I found that all these big four I have worked with, they take the input from us only and make a better presentation of the same problem, same solution which we have given. My management won't listen to me, but uh, with my uh, inputs to the big four, when they make a presentation with their own you know, impactful presentation. Then company pays them four, five crore and buys the same idea, which they were not listening to me for last one year or two years, right? But in case of MSMEs, uh, obviously we cannot take too much of input from them. We have to give them a fresh light. We have to give them a fresh insight. That's how probably in my understanding things work. I am also a coach and I'm going to, I'm structuring my program. So I think that is one area where I wanted your inputs. What is your view on that? Because with the big corporates, you can take the input and present it back. But in case of MSMEs, you have to give them, understand their business and give them inputs. So it's sure. quite contradictory and different. Sure. So Dr. Khanna, thanks first of all. I think uh, this is a good observation and I respect your uh, experience uh, and what you're talking about. Um, you know, in my experience, Dr. Khanna, what I've observed is two trends. One is um, it's incredibly important to give these SMEs outside in perspective, like you mentioned just now. So what we do at our program is that we have developed benchmarks. We have developed outside in view as to how the industry is functioning, which business models are becoming successful. And we go there with the answer first philosophy. We don't go there in uh, saying that, hey, let me extract all the information that you have. Let me analyze it back and then give you what you may intuitively know already and then uh, you know, basically walk away. Uh, I think what we do is that we give outside in perspective, which is exactly what you're saying, you're very right. 
and therefore they perceive value because that's a knowledge for them that's a new thing for them their entire learning based on anecdotal evidence and they're a small mm -hmm. world and they do not have the luxury of data of what is happening outside so what we have done in our tools in our learning we have incorporated that outside in our learning so example i'll give you so you know uh, i used to lead automotive practice and financial services practice and food practice earlier and even today automotive is one of our largest sort of focus areas amongst the others now mahindra tata's all have been my clients and you know some of the mnc uh, auto component large tier one companies which are multi million companies etc right so when we work with them it was clear that they had a lot of resident knowledge but what they needed was an outside in process management to arrive at a solution it was a process it was not about the domain knowledge whereas in case of msmes it was domain and process both because they lack both so what we have done we have now developed a tool which is business plan automated tool for auto component manufacturers which incorporates this outside in knowledge so if somebody were to look at ev for example electric vehicles mobility and what's the transition plan for current automotive to move to ev that knowledge is embedded in that tool so that they are able to use the tool with that knowledge as opposed to asking them okay now tell me what is happening in ev they will say are i am going to ask you you know it better than i do uh so that's perfectly valid now the second is second learning dr khanna is that some smes do have knowledge it's not that they don't have knowledge what they lack is mobilization building a consensus because a lot of these smes are driven by entrepreneurs the second line third line fourth line is weak so what we do is that through the process of development we basically harness what is already known and then make sure that there is an appreciation of what is already known and to put them into the framework because a lot of them do not have the framework to arrive at a decision they may have knowledge nuggets or some information points here and there but how to translate that information into a decision is where they lack so that's the process that we help with so i hope that answers your question on uh, you know on query on uh, how how does it help in case of sms yes absolutely absolutely samir thank you very much now we request authishri please can you Uh, yes, thank you, Samir, for a, a very wonderful pr presentation and a, a very detailed one, and rather very specific also at some stages. Very much connecting. So I would like to know that uh, since I'm associated associated with some of the Chamber of Commerce and uh, the bodies who are already promoting SMEs in India, that uh, what do you think that uh, these uh, the generic policies for SMEs which government is promoting are they useful and uh, what is your view on that? so let me give two examples in the in this case uh, 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 mr sherry uh, i think the you know let's take an example of z scheme let's the, uh, the let's take an example of production links linked incentives right yeah now there are 13 industries which are very well predisposed to avail of production linked incentives or across the industry uh, i think people can take help of z scheme for example right now unfortunately what i observe is there is a lot of information asymmetry Uh, you know a lot of the schemes and the policies that the government has first of all i find lot of gap in terms of translating them into the environments that the smes have themselves yeah. so first task is to bridge that gap right to basically yeah. make them understand and aware that how to translate these schemes into their environments they you know i get very uh, surprised when smes ask me government ne ye scheme ki hai lekin mujhe pata nahi exactly that's my point right so there is a there is an implementation issue on the ground so we need to yeah. bridge that gap number one number two now that you are associated lot of associations and you know uh, in last two years i have developed partnerships with many many of the association cii fiki uh, phd yeah. sme yeah. chamber there's so many now the point is that lot of these events that happen is more of a series of just speeches but what is needed is a workshop and this i would strongly urge you know you if you are associated with certain associations and we can work together on that to arrange workshops in a very concerted manner i would rather have 100 smes who have who have achieved a breakout speed and growth than having 1000 attending the event with none of them implemented because post the events everybody forgets right so there has to be a very concerted committed effort to translate the learning into action and that's the design that we need to do with the associations and with these different bodies who are active in helping the smes so i would say the schemes are understanding is one issue interpretation is another issue 
thirdly translating that into action uh, so let's z scheme for example we are doing an ip we are developing an ip to convert that into a tool that smes can use themselves right so tomorrow you may have a document which reads the terms and conditions and the clauses of z scheme but to analyze that and to put that into action somebody is needed to do that work so what we are doing we are converting that into a tool which smes can use and then they can implement themselves so that they are able to take avail of that particular scheme great great thank you so very much so as you said mentioned about the workshops uh, into uh, chamber of commerce i would like to understand that uh, uh, what kind of content you cover there because generally when i attend these events i'm going on another one on 26th of august in punjab only in mohali so there you will find a very confined timing so they have like 4 to 5 hours of event where they they pull off some government officials and uh, they do keep uh, some key panel discussions where you find good value at times so uh, how do you fit into that kind of uh, a format or you are uh, saying that we can have a separate workshop in alignment to a different bodies uh, probably i can connect you there in uh, in those bodies yeah so i think it happens in two stages the first is this kind of format that you are referring to which most yeah. of the associations do have recently i went to jalandhar and at a, i spoke there at a cii event uh, basically yeah. and um, you know i'm in ludhiana in some uh, in in some time so if you are doing in mohali for example uh, you know it's very important not only to have the presence of the who is who in the stakeholder system because yeah. that's what event organizers want yeah. but it's more important to make sure that it translates and culminates into a series of workshops post that event it's it's just not about one of the situations it's about complementing that event with those workshops and i would recommend that that's something that we need to do in two stages as opposed to either or it's not either or it's complementary both are needed but i think what is needed is the follow up is the follow up with this smes members whether they have implemented whether they have benefited what's the feedback loop because that's when the ecosystems will develop it's not about attending the event having lunch and coming back absolutely well said uh, so we shall be in touch uh, you can share your credentials uh, i can see where we can invite you and have you sure thank you thank you so much really thank you yeah thank you so much everyone now i request mr sudeep ji i think sudeep ji up you have raised a hand maybe i think yes yeah uh, hi yeah. yes am i am i audible Yes, your episode. Yeah, sir. My my question is, uh, you know, one place which I struggle. Let me give an example. Let's say this is an uh, this is a portal which helps MBA student, MBA colleges to get their admissions. Their student, they help the MBA aspirants to go to get to the right college. Now it is an it is say and turnover of around three to four crores. But the problem comes is understanding. what is the total there are five seven more competitors eight nine more competitors so we want to see that what is the total market so what is who has how much turnover and getting this numbers so now this was easy because we are one and there are five there are other places where there are 45 so how do from where do i get this number which are big four presents that this is the total number of the market and this is the percentage it is growing these are only two three numbers which we struggle to get so is it possible to get that what is the total market and where it is uh, uh, and how much is the growth for them for past two three years i'm being more but if numbers bigger mil jaye so so that is one number two this was one where how to get that data is it possible so number two was is that lot of increments or improvements that we do in a company is not moat it is not the competitive advantage it can be copied by others also it's an operational betterment but it is copied there is no premium to the to that part but we many times struggle to find out which one of this will be out of the five improvements that we do this is the one which will be a competitive advantage in the third step Choose. which is hard to copy and that will have a premium of the price we can command so these are the two questions sir where i where we start both are good, very good questions sir dj uh, let me answer the first question uh, see now this is a common session so we can get into a detailed session on terms of specifically in your context where you can get the data but just to give you a perspective and a framework uh, you know what we always do and what i've always advised all my uh, beneficiaries is to first of all decide the framework of getting what data you require to make what kind of decision 
So for example, if it is total number of students and you know, sizing the market and looking at opportunities over there, uh, there is a primary research and there is a secondary research. Secondary research is all that you can compile from available sources. But what I insist on in my career so far and which has added tremendous value is really the primary research. There is no substitute than basically interviewing and making sure that we gather that intelligence by talking to these people uh, to be able to make our own judgment and opinion, which is informed based on triangulation of both secondary and primary research sources. And that, that is what big four do. That is what all consultants do. That is what I have done. And there is no other method to that. Because I think the right, the key thing in market sizing, I've always found that, um, you know, I, you know, interestingly, when I ask this question to SME beneficiaries and their own markets, you get four to five different answers of market size. You get four to five different answers of their own market share. So if this is a situation, we don't know where we are. How can we reach where we want to go? So it's very important to triangulate first where your current position is based on primary and secondary research information. I can suggest to you the secondary information, maybe post this session or maybe individually you and I can get in touch with and I can talk to you about that. But I think what is very important is the method that you deploy to do the primary research. That will give you an insight as to why and story behind numbers, just not the numbers. Because the story behind the numbers is more important than the numbers, right? And that you can get Thank only you. through primary research. Uh, and this is something that I would say is a framework that you should adopt. But anyway, specifically in your context, we will obviously have another session, not a problem at all. Reach out to me and then I can help you with that. So not a problem. Now coming to your second question, I think uh, uh, if you if you could paraphrase that question once again for me, Sudipji. So now what happens? <clears throat> we think about uh, so at first the first one please i will uh, love for your uh, informations where we can meet or can we have a one to one or right credentials on the first one my my, my second question is there are a lot of improvements in the business there are say five seven things which we think about about the improvements uh, we will have a better content we will work on the better ui we will improve so Right. But we know that these can be copied. Anybody who does this, the competition will also copy. And in result, like a competitive world, the customer benefits, but none of the vendors have a leverage of a higher price or more market share. We want to do something which becomes, say, boss, ye wala na competitive advantage will help us to be a premium. Baki competitor nahi de paega. Ye ek der saal ka, do saal ka ek aisa feature hai, jo others can't copy. Right. So, so you know, and that's that's where we feel around that. How do we how do we distinguish between effectiveness yeah. and sure. a moat and a competitive advantage? Sure. So we have a tool called competitive analysis, Sudip Ji, which basically takes into account uh, what we call uh, you know a value framework, which is for a given offering. What is the consideration that you are receiving from your customer? And is it better than what the other competitors of yours are getting, right? Um, now, what we do is over there is that let me let me share with you my evidence of you know having researched these companies. The 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 time for sustainable competitive advantage is diminishing rapidly. Okay, so what you may call a advantage and a premium is getting copied in all industries pretty fast because information is becoming transferable. The talent is transferable. Uh, the loyalty of the talent to an organization is coming down. The knowledge uh, asymmetry is going down. There are technologies which will allow you to build artificial intelligence that can equip you with that knowledge faster. And therefore, the whole idea about competitive advantage on a rig, uh, you know a sustainable competitive advantage uh, for two years, three years is actually gone. So that's a that's a myth. What I have found is that the ability of the SMEs especially to adapt rather than build a sustainable competitive advantage is far more superior than actually thinking and living in the world to think that there will be some advantage for two, three years. What I have found that you can build an advantage, you can sustain it for six months, one year, but you need to continuously search for the new thing for the next year. So it's no longer, so your time frames are shrinking, right? So it's no five years, three years, two years, one year. So there is competitive advantage, but and in fact, in one of the talks that I've given there, uh, you, you can go to the YouTube link. I'll send you the link. Please. There is competitive advantage, but that competitive advantage need not be sustainable. 
there will be different competitive advantage points that you need to figure out on a regular basis now that means there is has to be a team there has to be an effort assigned to one of your team members to gather that information on a regular basis so I, the question that i would pose back to you is how frequently do you monitor the environment at competitors when you develop and implement your strategy how frequently there is a dashboard that comes to you which says okay this is what is happening with respect to my competition this is what is happening with respect to my customer and then make those competitive advantage positions decisions on a regular basis and that's the heart of being adaptive as opposed to being straight jacketed into a building a competitive sustainable advantage right so this whole world of sustainable is changing is what I, my mood point is uh, and therefore you need to find out the new avenues of advantage all the time now in practice when i say this uh, all these things but in practice what is needed is what i call an execution discipline which is basically ability to know the sources of information about your competition because unless unless you know that there is no way you can you will know that whether it is going to be an advantage over the others or not you will be surprised sudeep ji when i ask the sales people in automotive component manufacturers uh, ask them do you know how much your own oe is spending on your own products in general they don't know this information can you believe it right if i ask them saying that you are selling um, spark plugs how much is your oe spending on spark plugs on an average and what do you think is your wallet share they don't know this and that company is 300 crores 200 crores and 500 crores right now you can imagine if we don't know whether you have a wallet share which is a leading one or a lagging one how can you grow right so i think this whole thing boils down to एडवांटेज की तो बात की बात की बात है लेकिन पहले तो बेसिक इन्फॉर्मेशन चाहिए उसके बाद में यू विल नो व्हाट्स अ प्रीमियम दैट यू कैन डू व्हाट्स अ बेटरमेंट दैट यू कैन डू ओवर योर कॉम्पिटेटर एंड यूजुअली एंड लेट मी शेयर यू अनदर नॉलेज लर्निंग दैट आई हैड इन लास्ट थर्टी इयर्स यूजली आई हैव फाउंड इन एस एम इस केस स्पीड इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट दैन बिल्डिंग सस्टेनेबल नेबुलस एडवांटेज the speed with which you are able to be better and better every day is the heart of what smes should do on a regular basis and that you know if you are 80% of your competitor but you do it twice uh, twice the speed right you will be better off than uh, your competitor so your competitor your product need not be need not be exactly equivalent or better than your competitor but if you are able to do it faster this is what the systems are demanding these days so i mean uh, we can go on but i i would say probably this is where the um, crux of the matter is and we can discuss this more later hi shithija am i allowed or am i passing out my time am i allowed to ask one or two things more yes yes you may sudeep you may um, my one more question you may okay right sir i will take the time for taking two two questions here first a short one tools when you are telling i would like to know what are the ideologies that is going behind the tools so i think somewhere that is that is also summarized what are the principles and ideologies that is going behind the tool just that it is a tool and it makes me easy makes me afraid of using it that i take a wrong decision based on the output that the tool gives right that's number one and number two sir uh, right i am just asking because i see that you have more experience in this space i don't but this is out of this context but i get into when i am doing the research and consumer behavior two theories which i take one is going by the persona right uh, or what is the designation and the profile and the demographic and the persona and there is another school of thought which talks about jobs to be done so you know so any of this two so which one do you find have been you know useful or it is a hybrid of both so over to you sir right so on the first one the tools we will give you the list of ideology behind it and uh, it is a combination of of some of the research work done and it's a combination of our own set of experience so the tools will have it so that that's your uh, you know first answer second is that these two things sudeep ji to my mind are not either or your job to be done by uh, clayton christensen right that's the that's the model that he talked about and when clayton talks about jobs to be done it is modeled around a use case it's modeled around a persona so when you want to get the job done it is for a specific beneficiary and when you think about a specific beneficiary you think about a particular persona of a beneficiary not only in structural persona but also behavioral persona so there are two points of truth one point of truth is when the your beneficiary is deciding what he or she wants or needs 
and secondly the uh, when when they start buying and using those uh, products and offerings and services which will satisfy their need or want right now these two moments of truth uh, are to do with a specific persona are to do with a specific beneficiary profile and the job to jobs to be done as clayton puts it uh, is for that persona so to me it's not either or it is both are related to each other you get the job done for a particular persona thank you thank you i will request your the credentials so that we can connect of course yes sure okay any other question please anyone krishnama ji you want to add something when samir speaks i only listen carefully what he says i don't interrupt him <laughs> krishnama you can very well ask me questions no problem No, no, no! It's it's so amazing to always listen to you. I just, I just, you know, I I, I just go with the flow. <clears throat> I get lost. So uh, you may go ahead. Okay, so uh, you can move forward with your presentation part. The next. Great. So I think. Uh, uh... you know uh, the next uh, segment of the presentation was i i believe was a q and a between uh, jaspreet and me uh, i don't know what's the status of that uh, i'm sorry to inform you that jaspreet is traveling he's in us and unfortunately he could not connect there are two reasons one it is already 1 o'clock midnight in us and he doesn't have uh, doesn't have i believe he doesn't have the Uh, access to the internet he was trying but he could not but it was a wonderful wonderful listening uh, from you and it is uh, from our bankable community thank you so much it is a great uh, it was actually little one we need to have a big session from you and uh, for the coming weeks we would request uh, you and we would ask jaspreet to be in touch with you all the time and uh, we can have a longer uh, discussion and longer session of yours that would be much beneficial for these bankable people of our community thank you so much absolutely preet very happy to engage further on specific uh, areas in fact what i would recommend preet is to look at uh, specific topics and let's have a discussion around that topic as opposed to this you know because then yes. then it's far more enriching and interactive etc so let's say if we decide to take a call on what are the strategies that sme should adopt for example right uh, that there is so much thinking around that and it will be wonderful to interact on those topics for example right so uh, absolutely uh, that would be that would be a wonderful tip also we have and we are specific and uh, that is actually good to go around that uh, specific topic that would be more helpful i believe thank you so sure. much thank you samir samir this time this time uh, i would request uh, Uh, we will have a physical uh, event um, uh, meeting with you it should be a physical uh, a session and not a, a a zoom because then you know when you when when we are there face to face there are so many things which will come up so whenever you have time please let me know when uh, jaspreet is back i love to organize a physical event with you absolutely kushnuma any time for you uh, for you i am always there you. no problem thank you so much thank you sure. so i i don't have anything else right now on my plan uh, so unless you guys have more maybe we could conclude yeah wow wonderful wonderful presentation thank you so much samir for the uh, you know presentation so if anyone has any question then ask or uh, rest we are good to go for wrap up yes. uh, ayushi may i add something more Yes, please. Yes, please. Um, uh, to all my bank members, whatever problems we have been focusing on, and every weekly we talk, Samir is one point solution for all those because he has been handling a number of, I mean, not one or two SMEs, but thousands of SMEs, and he's every day involved into such problem solving issues. So I think um, uh, we need to have more and more sessions 
with Samir and uh, uh, Ayushi. Yes. Uh, every fortnightly, we should actually we should we should call Samir, you know, uh, for these problem solving. For sure. Yes, of course. So Ayushi, uh, I would like to talk to Samir first. Hi, Samir. This is Navni. So I'm into trophies and awards. So I'm into trophies and awards manufacturing. And uh, I'm based in uh, Muratabad, UP. So, uh, what I came to know from your presentation, I mean, you have discussed a lot about the lot about your company and uh, what you do basically. But how you do? It's, I'm little uh, not sure how you do it. Yeah, so sure. The tools you the tools you told, and so I have hired uh, two three consultants earlier as well. Uh, tried to implement also. And uh, obviously failed because again it was a gyan what you said in the beginning only. And uh, during the implementation also it was like uh, they came to my factory, they visited, they stayed here for around uh, say three four days in a week. He was flying from Chennai. Uh, I paid him a lot actually. That's a good amount what I paid for me. It was a good amount. And uh, it was turning beautifully. It was actually coming out re good results for about to come, I will say. But, you know, uh, when you are struggling with daily amounts, okay, I have to make the payments and uh, I, I don't have the amount in my fund, in the account. So, paying to a consultant and struggling to paying the salaries, there is a difference. And it is not only with me, I think it is with everyone. I'm talking about the general statement. So how do you charge and how do you implement this and how do you practice your practices, whatever the tools you are telling in the companies? How do you implement actually? That's uh, it's little my concern is that. Yeah, no, very good question, Navneet. And, uh, you know, we have two tracks. Uh, one is a track for companies which are uh, having revenue less than 75 crores. And the second track is for little mid-sized companies, little larger SMEs. Uh, the situation that you are describing, I would assume that you uh, you belong to the first segment. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's the truth, but I'm guessing. Um, yeah, you are very much right. So I'm into under no. 20 though. Okay, okay. So in that case, uh, the good news is that everything that you will be given from Armani Foundation is completely pro bono. And we are in the how completely? part of you asked you ask me about the how part, right? Basically, uh, what we do is that we do online diagnostic test of where you are today, which is a test that I referred to in my speech earlier. And secondly, then we follow it up with um, with a series of conversations with you and not only conversations, but basically for implementation for your own people. What is needed is the ability to actually inform their implementation in what we call a implementation discipline. So there is a program management office template. There is a way to review the uh, progress of your own team members. There is a way to de-bottleneck uh, whatever is happening in a day-to-day -day basis, right? And that knowledge is something that we give to your own people, right? So it's not that you're dependent on consultant and then consultant goes away and then it's a problem. Or like you said, you didn't have money to pay to them because of your daily compulsions and other things, basically. Both these situations won't arise because your own people will know how to implement it better. And secondly, you don't have to pay. So therefore, uh, what we believe is that, uh, you know, I don't know what your current situation is. We can talk about it separately. But once we understand your current situation better, then I'll be able to help you in terms of how you can, we can design an entire implementation program for you, which will help you come out of your current situation and become better naturally. So we can decide those goals together and we can decide the implementation, how to do it together as well. And that's the fun. The how part the, is customized. It's not standard rookie cutter, which comes to end and says, here is the way, and you should only uh, subscribe to that. But that part of how is very contextual, is very customized, it's very personalized to your situation. And that's something that I would like to get into touch with you and understand better so that we can help you better. Mm, okay, but uh, I think if you will explain it something uh, more, Certainly benefit for everyone as well. So see, uh, the people who are, all the members are here, it's similar, we are in the same track. 
everyone is having the problems everyone is in the same stage uh, financially what i'm talking about here maybe you can customize more for me but uh, still uh, i would like to know more how do you implement basically how do you help in implementing yeah so i just by uh, training the tr- training the staff so we train the staff and we basically de bottleneck by live situation i'll give an example that's the yeah. best uh, basically yeah. in a company uh, in a company they were having a trouble of paying the raw mat- uh, the vendors right because they didn't have enough cash correct mm-hmm. uh, so they needed to either raise fresh funds or they needed to unlock the capital from the operations so that they are able to pay the vendors is simple right but they were not able to implement it for several reasons uh, so what we did we uh, basically put them in touch with a particular vendor of ours particular uh, particular service provider who is able to free up the capital from the operations of the company on a success basis and is also able to arrange for finances which doesn't depend on collaterals because a lot of the smes that today are going through the situation are leveraged enough so that they are not able to go to bank and ask for more money for increasing of the limits or utilizing more limits so what we did was that we put them in touch with this particular person that i'm talking about or this particular company which allowed them to free up the working capital that they had to the extent of 60% so financing either through a non collateralized means on the receivables and inventory and that allowed them the infusion of capital which helped them survive the current situation and then we helped that complemented by basically making sure that the unlocked capital is put to right use and after one year got into a situation only that they don't have money to pay the vendors because their ability to manage the working capital became better because we trained them so it's not training versus actually implementation it's training and getting the uh, implementation done through this uh, advisory network that i'm talking about and that solved the problem of this company so if somebody is facing cash flow issues somebody is really fire fighting then one is to dodge the fire so we need somebody to dodge the fire fight quickly but we also need to train the people as to make sure that how fires don't occur again so we did both in this example so basically the working capital was freed up they got the cash so the immediate problem was solved and they all knew how how to make how to make right decisions so that they don't encounter the situation again so therefore we prevented the fires to happen from there on right so that over a period of one or two years their frequency came down and then now they are a far better off organization better trained organization they don't need us basically right as much so this is an example another example somebody was basically looking at um, losing business from current customers and the reason that happened because of the covid they did not have the as much reliance on their supply chains and because supply chains did not fulfill their promises they were not able to ship the products on time to the customers customers lost faith they st- stopped giving business to the uh, our client and therefore client was left with uh, customer churn at the same time issues in managing cash so now what does one do in this situation right so what we did was basically taught that customer how to shrink to grow fast faster so in this situation we actually gave him a recommendation that you need to scale down to grow better later and that customer is thanking us because usually you would go into say hey if i am 100 crores today or if i am 70 crores or 50 crores how can i become 500 crores that's usually the acceleration talk that i had gave just now right but in certain situations you may need to go down from 50 crores to 20, 25 crores you will be fitter you will be faster and then your ability to grow to 100 crores is far better than 50 crores to 100 crores in the early situation so this is highly you know uh, this is highly situation specific to that particular customer so in this case what we did was to basically make sure that they have a right relationship management with the lost customer we basically put the house in order first we said curtail your ambitions uh, first put the house in order make sure that you are efficient you are uh, you are nailing the problem with the quality and the speed then you scale it up in fact let me give you um, another framework that i did and this is this is what we exactly implemented you know on the right, left hand side as you can see on the slide there is this what i call bermuda triangle of speed quality and scale most smes fall in this trap when they scale up the quality suffers or the speed suffers and as a result of which they are not able to scale up they again have to shut down or they face cash problems 
So what we did for this particular situation, because they lost the customer and because they had cash problem, we brought his attention back to basics of quality and speed. Then we went on to scale up, right? Uh, so therefore on the right hand side that you can see there is a method to basically think about nailing first quality then putting speed and then scaling it up. So all the SMEs which are wanting to scale up but are struggling, we never advise them to scale up. We advise them to scale down, put the speed and quality in place and then scale up. Now that could be a situation of a customer churn, it could be a cash issue, it could be a payment related issue, it could be an issue of losing your talent, it could have different expressions depending on which SMEs we are talking about. But I think the moral of the story is that it's important in these two which I it's important to look at solving the problems quickly so that there is a right solution that happens. It's like a trauma center in a hospital, right? You first solve a trauma and then you get the patient to fitness. Uh, so we'll do that, but we'll also make sure that your people are trained because we don't want to have trauma again. So that's what we want to do with your organization as well as the others who are on the call. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So any other question somebody wants to ask or should we wrap up? Riji, my question is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, good morning, Samir Ji. It was a very insightful session. It was fun. And what you gave in the last example of trauma center and health, it was completely connected. Very good. Sure. Very good. तो एक जो छोटी चीज है मैं भी थोड़ी सी हेल्प लेना चाहूंगा इन जनरल मैं भी एक ट्रेडर हूं सर चावड़ी बाजार में मेरा ट्रेडिंग का काम है और सभी बिजनेस में रोज ही फायर फाइटिंग करते हैं रोज ही आग लगती है कुछ ना कुछ होता है तो आपसे किस तरह से हम ऑफलाइन कनेक्ट कर सकते हैं थोड़ा वो प्लीज आप बताइए श्योर सो सिंपल थिंग दैट यू कुड डू इज दैट यू जस्ट राइट टू मी एंड देर इज अ इनफैक्ट यू जस्ट नीड टू अप्लाई टू दिस प्रोग्राम सिंपल थिंग ये जो लिंक है ना इधर जो कोड है आपको दिख रहा है ना वो स्कैन कीजिए अप्लाई कीजिए then you will be a part of our system. Once you are a part of system, then automatically we'll reach out to you because we want to help you. Uh, so simple thing is to scan the scan the code here and then start applying. 